Well, welcome to week two of our series entitled, It's Personal. And one of the things that makes us each unique is the things that we enjoy, the things that we're knowledgeable about, the things that we love. And for me, uh, there are certain things, just like you, that I know a lot about. And there are also, at the same time, things that I just don't know very much about. And over the last several weeks, as we led up to Election Day, I've had more political conversations and political questions asked of me uh, than any other time. And we've probably all been in conversations like that. And a few weeks ago, I was with a friend that I hadn't seen in a while, and he uh, is super into politics. He knows a lot about his position as well as opposing positions, and he's very passionate about the presidential election. In fact, he told me that every four years, this is like my World Cup. He knows that I love soccer, and he said, I, I love uh, this time of year. I love talking about it. I love researching. And so we started having this conversation, and as he began to talk more and more about it, eventually I kind of had to throw up the white flag and say, man, I just don't know nearly as much about politics as you do. I, I care about our country, and I'll pray for our country, but he and I are just a little bit different. He loves politics, and I honestly just don't. And so I had to kind of tell him, I don't have anything else to offer in this conversation. We are all unique people. And I'd be remiss to say today, as we uh, record this message, we're still praying for our country. The, the votes have been cast, and we're still waiting uh, to find out if my friend was right or wrong in regards to who was going to win this year's election. But I share this story with you more to highlight the reality that when we are around people, those conversations can reflect really what type of person we are. And when I say that, I mean more or less what we're interested in and what we're not interested in. And what we love and what we care about and what we pursue and other things that we just simply don't know nearly as much about. In our world, we often will look at other people and based on their actions, maybe even the way they look, the type of friends that they keep, the things that they do, we can look at other people and we can start to assume we know what type of person they are. And we can even kind of categorize them as a type of person that would like this or like that. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look at Jesus' interaction with Zacchaeus to kind of give us some encouragement on how we should approach our interactions with other people. I think for me, sometimes I can fall into this trap of thinking that everything that matters to me matters to other people. I'm going to say that again. I think we can all fall into the trap of assuming that if it matters to me, then it matters to all everyone else around me. And that in some cases may be true, but in a lot of cases, that's actually not the case. Not everything that I am passionate and that I care about are my friends, my coworkers, my peers going to feel the same way about. And in that tension, we can really get ourselves in some bad spots. So for example, some of you heard me say in our intro that uh, I'm not super passionate about politics. And immediately for some of you, that makes you frustrated with me because you believe that since politics are really personal to you, they should be really personable, personal to everyone. And there might be some truth and, the, and some maybe good conversation that can happen there. But the reality is not just politics, but all kinds of things in our lives we're going to care about certain things that quite simply are just not important to other people. And in that tension, I can get stuck in some pretty bad spots. I can look at someone that doesn't care about something that I care about, and I can become frustrated or disenchanted with them and the way they're handling that situation. And it can cause me to have some pretty negative thoughts. And what I want to do is I want to help us manage that tension a little bit together tonight by looking again to Luke chapter 19, starting in verse 3. It says this, He, Zacchaeus, wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the, the sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. 
You see, in these verses, we read about how Jesus made it very personal with Zacchaeus. This guy who was an unpopular tax collector, uh, and in that he was the type of person that the community would have had all kinds of assumptions about, and they would have looked at, at Zacchaeus and said, man, he, he's not like us. He doesn't care about the same things. He doesn't hold the same priorities that we hold. Even though he's one of us, he's not one of us. He, it's just, the, he's, he's over here, separated from us. And though Jesus is walking through a crowd that felt that way, he desired to look past the crowd's opinion of Zacchaeus and actually make it personal and have a specific interaction with Zacchaeus. And the reality is that Jesus does the same for you and I. There are people in our world that no matter what we do, they are going to look at us and they're going to pass some type of judgment on the type of person that we are. And if we're being honest, a lot of times those people don't even really know everything there is to know about the type of person we are. They, they, they don't know us in a personal way. They don't know what our passions are. They don't know uh, what we care the most about. They don't know the types of priorities that we're setting in our lives, but they look at us from afar and they make assumptions and judgments about the type of person that we are. And I want you to understand something, that no matter what other people think about you, Jesus looks past all of that stuff. He looks past the way in which the world looks at us, and he looks at us in a far more personal way. He knows what matters to us, and he truly cares about who we are deep down as people. We live in a world where we can really get caught up on the way in which we are perceived by other people. And Jesus moves past all of that. He doesn't see us like other people see us. He sees us for the real type of person that we are. And we can make it personal by engaging in our relationship with Jesus on an authentic level. So for me, there's really kind of two main points of application when we think about this idea of Jesus knowing us in a personal way. We know that Jesus knows what matters to us, and because of that, we can make it personal by investing in our relationship with him on a real level. And for me, that means when I stop and pray to God, and when I interact with him in my own journey, I seek to be honest with where I'm at, what I care about what I'm thinking about, what, what I'm struggling with, and what I desire the future to look like. He, he already knows uh, the desires of our hearts, and his real objective is to be in a place where our relationship with him is full of us being personal. For me to be able to tell him the things that I want to see happen, and to be honest about the struggles that I'm having in my life and even in my relationship with him. I think there's this temptation to allow our relationship with God to be something that's distant as opposed to something that's personal. And Jesus desires to have a personal relationship with us. He knows us in an intimate way, and he desires to have that type of interaction with us. The other thing that we can do in regards to making it personal is we can make it personal for the other people around us. And earlier I spoke to this kind of the way our world works and the way in which we look at other people and make assessments and judgments about the type of person that they are. And if we're honest, just because we're, for those of us that are listening and we would call ourselves Christians, even though we're Christians, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're any better at that than other people. In fact, sometimes as Christian people, we can be more harsh and more judgmental when we look at other people in our world. And we can make assumptions about who they are, what they're doing, and what they really care about. Even though we don't actually know them on a personal level. And I think Jesus sets a great example for us because had Jesus uh, walked down through that crowd and saw Zacchaeus, and he knew the way in which the crowd felt about Zacchaeus, the type of person he was. And Jesus would have said, well, that's the type of person that I don't really want to interact with. And so he kept going. 
It would have changed the story drastically. But Jesus sets an example for us in that we have to be willing to look past all that stuff and to actually sit down with the person and get to know them on a personal level and to find out who they are and what it is that they believe and where they're at in their faith journey. And regardless of your, where you're at spiritually, maybe you're just new to following after Jesus or maybe you haven't made a decision to follow after him. This is such a great point of application for all of us. Regardless of where we're at in our spiritual journey, if we can be the type of people who are willing to sit down and to get to know someone, to get to know them on a personal level as opposed to casting some type of judgment or to make some unsafe assumption about who they are. God is so pleased and people are so encouraged when we get to know them on a personal level. Your small group is a great place uh, as you go to your discussion time uh, to really talk about the things that matter the most to you. In fact, your small group should know you better uh, than a lot of other people that you interact with in your world. Let me pray for us. God, we love you. Thank you for today, and we thank you for the reality that you know what matters to each one of us. And God, we pray that we are willing to have a personal relationship with you, and we're also willing to get to know other people around us on a personal level. It's your name that we pray. Amen.